So you're thinking about moving to Newport, Rhode Island, but don't know what neighborhood may be best for you? Well, in today's video with my teammate, Caitlin, we are gonna cover the nine different neighborhoods you could potentially purchase in here in Newport, Rhode Island. So if this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is about living in Rhode Island, subscribe below, tap that bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market here in Rhode Island. My name is Devin and my team and I, we get calls and texts every single day from people just like you looking to make their move to Rhode Island and we absolutely love it. Whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email so we can help you make a smooth transition here to the Ocean State. So today we are with my team teammate Caitlin talking about the different neighborhoods here in Newport, Rhode Island. Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to learn about these neighborhoods. All right, we're going to give you an education. I So tell me, it looks like the first one is the point. So Devin, tell me about the point. Yeah, so the point section is located right off of the Newport Bridge. So if you're coming from Connecticut, New Jersey, um, New York, the point section is going to be an area where you want to buy in because it's conveniently located. It's a quiet neighborhood. One thing that people really like about the point is its walkability to everything that Newport has to offer. Oh, I like that. So it sounds like if they're into restaurants, coffee, yep. sightseeing, they're kind of the it's point right is there. in the middle. Yeah, you can walk out to Goat Island. It's about a 15 or 20 minute walk. Oh, wow. And then it's about a 20 minute walk into the heart of downtown Newport. A lot of the homes in this area are gonna be single family residents. There's not gonna be a lot of condos over there. Yeah. And the price point's gonna be about 700,000 to 5 million over in this neighborhood. Wow, and the, I assume this is like right on the water for people who yeah, are Yeah, so you have Washington Street, which is yeah. right on the water, but also it has a neighborhood feel, whereas a lot of the other neighborhoods, some of them are located downtown. What people really like about this neighborhood is its walkability to everywhere, but yeah. also it really feels like its own separate area, kind of away from the craziness of downtown. Oh, that's nice. So it sounds like someone wants to be near the action, but not like in it. Yeah, like their toe in the action, yeah, but kind but of not, stepping out. You know, yeah, their own little privacy. That's what yeah. makes the point really cool. And one thing that people like as well, the point section has its own association that you do not have to be a part of. But what's nice is you can join that association and the whole neighborhood is always throwing events. They'll have holiday events, oh, that's really Halloween nice. events, dog events. There's a lot of furry friends over in that area. <laughs> so funny. if you are buying in that area, be prepared to meet a lot of pets or have a pet of your own. That's really nice yeah, from so, a dog owner perspective. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You got to have the love, the furry friends. Yeah. And you mentioned like Goat Island for people who don't know, like. Yeah. So Goat, Goat Island is, is you go over a bridge and it's, it's, it used to be the old gurneys over there. So you have a hotel there. It's wow. the Newport uh, Newport Resort Hotel now. Yeah. So you can go back there. There's, res there's a restaurant back there known as Pineapples and you can grab amazing sunsets right in the back there. And that's easily walkable from the point section. Wow, sounds pretty great. Yeah, it is magic. So uh, neighborhood number two is Historic yep. Hill. Yep. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so Historic Hill is located pretty much downtown. So if you're somebody who wants a quiet neighborhood, Historic Hill is not gonna be the neighborhood for you. Oh. It is in the action. So <laughs> people coming from the city tend to vibe with this area because it makes them feel like they're in New York or they're in Boston. And you can, again, a neighborhood where you can literally walk to pretty much everywhere Newport has to offer. Wow. You can walk to Spring Street, so you can go to all the different shops over there. You can walk down to Thames Street, which is obviously iconic Thames yeah. Street, where all the shopping, all the dining, all the entertainment are taking place, and you literally just walk down the hill. Oh, wow. So th that's kind of historic hills in the center of everything. So center of everything. It's yeah. right behind the Viking Hotel. Over here, again, there's not as many multifamilies. There's condos and single family homes. Yeah. Price points over here are gonna be a little higher, probably a million to about four or five million over in this area. Got it. And people find this area attractive because again, it's walkable and they're in the action. I will say that parking over in this area Ooh, is difficult. Yeah. So having a driveway is a huge amenity. If you don't have a driveway, you're probably gonna park in your parking spot and you're not gonna move your car <laughs> because during during the summer months, you will not find a place to park. You'll be driving around. Yeah. For someone who's 
coming from you know another area doesn't really know how parking situation works in Newport. Do you have yeah. to like purchase a spot or like how does that? Yeah. So as work? a residence, you get parking passes. You get two parking passes as a resident, and uh, you can use those parking passes to obviously put your car on the street. Okay. Got know, it. So, but a lot of people in this area, they'll they'll have a bike, they'll have a scooter, yeah. or they just really want to be able to walk everywhere. Wow. You know. So. So. Broadway. Tell us about Broadway. This is the next up. Yeah. So next neighborhood is Broadway. Broadway has really been coming. It, the people call it North Broadway. People call it Broadway, but it's really the northern end of Newport. Okay. And it's really been up and coming over the last, I would say, seven to ten years because they the the town dumped about ten million into revitalizing Broadway. Wow. So I find this area of town is, there's a lot of investment properties over here, but also primary residents from people that live locally, Got just it. because the price points are so much more affordable than a lot of the other neighborhoods that we'll talk about. Yeah. You'll have condos over here, you have multifamilies over here, and you have single families over here. So Got your it. price points are gonna range, I would say conservatively between 300,000 and topping out right about a million. Oh, wow. So much more affordable, much more of affordable area compared to other neighborhoods in Newport. Yeah. Plus, people like the fact that they can walk to walk to Broadway. Yeah. It's more of the locals area whereas Thames Street, America's Cup, Bellevue, Spring Street, that's where a lot of tourists uh, basically go during the summertime, whereas the Broadway area, that whole area is where a lot of locals spend their summer, spend right. their fall, winter and spring over in that area. So is it more of like a year round, would yeah, you say neighborhood? Definitely more of a year round neighborhood. I mean, as Newport expands and as different neighborhoods become more expensive, yeah. of course that's where investors and second home buyers begin to kind of move into because they've been pushed out of the other price points. But majority, it's gonna be people that, that, that live in the area because they can actually afford to buy in yeah. this location. That's really great to know. I think especially from like a rental perspective, like if someone's trying to buy an investment property, what, you know, neighborhoods should they be looking at that yeah. maybe have more options? Yeah, because a lot of multifamilies here, just from a cap rate, cash on cash hand perspective, don't make a lot of sense numbers wise, unless you're buying them cash. So over in the Broadway area, you'll find a lot of multifamilies are purchased by owner occupants so that oh, they can yeah. offset their mortgage. So again, still you have locals moving into that area. That's really good to know. Yeah, absolutely. So next up is K. Catherine Neighborhoods. K. Catherine is like uh, the fancier neighborhood compared to Broadway. So ah. it's it's just up off of Broadway. You can he head up a -Roll Street, and that's where you're going to hit the K. Catherine Neighborhood. What's mm -hmm. You'll notice in the K. Catherine neighborhood is second homes and primary residence, but these lots are gonna be a little bigger um, compared to some of the other neighborhoods. And just the architecture is phenomenal in this neighborhood. Like everybody wow. in this neighborhood, in the K. Catherine neighborhood, they take a lot of pride in ownership. So wow. you can definitely get a sense, you, you know you're in the K. Catherine neighborhood because the homes yeah. are well appointed, the lawns are perfectly cut. Yeah. And the price points over here, you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna have second homes and you're gonna have primary residence. Yeah. Your price points over here are gonna be between about 800,000 to a couple million dollars in this. And more single families in this neighborhood compared to, you'll find a few multis and a yeah. few condos, but primarily it's gonna be single family homes. How's like the rental market in this neighborhood? Do you in this, find I find rentals? that um, I find that most people that own over here, again, are second home or primary, so they're not really renting out their properties. Yeah. You are gonna catch very high rents if you're somebody who's, who's happened to move away for whatever reason and you wanted to keep your beautiful home. I mean, you can catch really good rent in this neighborhood because mm -hmm. a lot of people that are looking for a second home or are potentially buying, they love this neighborhood. So they want to rent in the neighborhood, get a feel for it yeah. so that when they're ready to buy, they know what life is like living there. Right. And how, not probably not to ask a silly question, but you probably already answered it, but how far away would this be like walking to like Thame Street or? Yeah, that's a good question. So in the K. Catherine neighborhood, it's going to be about a 10 minute walk to, to Broadway. Yeah. About a 15 minute walk to the Viking Hotel to give oh, you yeah. some context. Yep. And then if you were to go to the heart of downtown Newport, I would give yourself 20 to 25 minutes. That's not bad. If, if we're targeting like the red pair at Midtown Oyster Bar yeah. as like the dead center of town. That's not bad at all. So still walkable, but yeah. you are gonna drive. Like if you're doing shopping, yeah. you're not gonna walk you're pretty much not gonna walk because it's too far of a walk to like carry your groceries and stuff. Yeah. So you'll, you'll find that you'll drive or take a scooter or a bike more right. often than not. 
That's good to know. So number five is the old beach neighborhood in Eustis Avenue. What can you All tell right. us about that? So this neighborhood's been experiencing a lot of development lately, especially mm. Eustis Ave. So this is kind of right over Memorial. It sits on the backside of K. Catherine and um, K. Catherine neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And the use this old beach area is very desirable. Uh, the homes over here, a lot of single family homes, very few condos. Homes over here are gonna be between a million five and six or seven million mm -hmm. in this neighborhood. And you're gonna have a lot more privacy compared to the other neighborhoods that we've talked about thus wow. far. And again, you will find over in this neighborhood everything is meticulous. Wow. It, it's primarily, primary, primary residents, excuse me, and second homes, even more so now, second homes, because people have identified this as an area that they can get into town, but yeah. also be very private. It, it seems like there's maybe a little bit more yard, right? To yeah, your lot sizes yeah. are bigger over here. Yeah. Definitely more yard. You'll find more fencing, more gated housing to pull into. Yep. And then Eustis Ave has just seen a lot of development, especially from the luxury developers uh, on Eustis Ave because you have views of First Beach and also wow. Easton's Pond. So these homes that are like little ranches are getting bought up and then they're building these very modern looking structures, you know, three, four, 5,000 square feet. Wow. So of the neighborhoods we've talked about thus far, it seems like the ones on the water near maybe with views would be like the point and you said this neighborhood as yeah, well so so you have washington street which is going to be your waterfront properties those are going to be a couple million and up mm -hmm. and that's going to have water views of the bridge and uh you can also see the hotel across there wow to goat island and yeah. then you have eustace ave where you have water views but old beach road it's not until you get to the bottom of old beach road where you would experience water views that's good to know that's yeah. really so good if to you're know. looking for a water view you want to be on the lower end of old beach and then eustace ave eustace ave runs all the way to bliss so certain portion of Houston, eustace ave is going to have water views wow and how far would like the cliff walk be like a walk it's right across the street oh, like that's from really old fun. beach to eustace it's literally a five minute walk that's and really probably nice. a 10 minute walk to first beach First beach is not as desirable as second beach. So if you're looking for the best beach, you're going to drive because you would go to second or third beach in Middletown. Got it. That's really good. But beach. it is nice that the cliff walks right there. Yeah, right? it's really nice. You know, in the, in the summer, the you go yeah. out there, everybody's working out, there's yeah. a lot of activity, and it's one of the most beautiful things you can do here in Newport. Yeah. Not bad for your backyard. Not bad for your backyard. Not bad for I'll your take backyard. It. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Uh, so number six is Bellevue Ave. Oh, Tell Bellevue. us about Bellevue. Bellevue Ave, just you better have a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bellevue Ave, um, it's where all the Gilded Aid mansions were. Uh, yeah. And those are pretty much all primary residents or uh, the Preservation Society has bought them. Hmm. These properties are single family structures. You pull in and you're like in a castle. Yeah, it's beautiful. So you're going to be between between $5 million, $4 million and up yeah. in this location. Uh, depending on what side you're living on in Bellevue, you will have ocean views overlooking the cliff walk. It's pretty amazing. So Bellevue used to be one of the wealthiest streets in the world at one point. Wow. You know, the Vanderbilts. I mean, we're yeah. talking real history here. Yeah. And that's what people knew Newport for was Bellevue Ave. So if you're somebody who wants to be a part of history, yeah. you can definitely be a part of it. You're just gonna pay a much higher price. And you're gonna, you won't, depending on where Bellevue, you may walk, but a lot of people, it's all private residents, all gated. Hmm. You're gonna pretty much drive anywhere into town because it's just distance wise from things that may be attractive to walk to. Yeah. It just wouldn't make sense to walk through. I really love the Bellevue location because you're, you're like right on, it seems like you're right on the edge of town, but also you go beyond Bellevue. And, and you're like, where am I? Yeah. <laughs> you're like in oh, this mysterious God. world. Yeah, yeah, it's really beautiful. Well, that's, the, that's why people buy on Bellevue. It's it's very, how can I say it? It's like you're a part of history Yeah. and you're in Newport and these are primarily second homes. Yeah. So these are people, and it's not their first second home. It's second, third, fourth, fifth, second home. Yeah. And they're here for a couple months out of the year and they want their privacy and they don't want to be, they don't want to feel like they're on top of, yeah. but also they want to be able to get to what Newport's popular for. And that's the restaurants, the dining, yeah. the boutique shopping, et cetera. Yeah. It's really beautiful. I always see like 
you know, a lot of people walking their dogs and oh, yeah. riding bikes. It's really peaceful. I know so there. many people are out there like running. I'll be in yeah. the morning driving at six o'clock on Bellevue and I'm like, this guy's <laughs> running. It makes me feel bad about myself. You know, I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Exactly. Um, so number seven is the Yachting Village. Tell us about Yachting Village. Yachting Village, that's uh, that's in the center of town as well. So you have upper and lower Thames Street. It would be yeah. more in the center of town of lower Thames Street. Okay. Yachting Village, what you'll notice over here is you'll find a lot of condos, a lot mm. of multifamilies, and a lot of single families. Price points over here are going to be between 600 and maybe 2 million. Oh, wow. But the Yachting Village is... People love it because you can literally stumble onto Thames Street. And that's why people are buying the Yacht and Village. It's really from Spring hmm. Street down to the water. So you're going to be able to easily access all the restaurants, all of the shopping, everything yeah. what makes Newport. It's just that some people don't find the Yachting Village to be their type of neighborhood because you're in the action. It's going to be in the summertime. I mean, you have summer rentals all around you. Yeah. There's certain parts of the Yachting Village that are a little more private than others. But yeah. for the most part, you may have your single family house next to a multi with people there just for the summer. Yeah. So you're so, you got to be somebody that wants to be in and around the action. This area is even more busy than Historic Hill. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So this is going to be more rental properties than Historic Hill. You won't find as many rental properties in Historic Hill with a bunch of people in them. Wow. And you mentioned Lower Thames and Upper Thames. So like with where Har Harvest Market is, Coffee Guy is at Lower Thames or which, what yeah, do you think? Yeah. So, um, I, Harvest Market, just re actually remind me where that is. I actually so, don't know. Oh, uh, if you, I think it's near like, uh, oh, crap. <laughs> oh, we're blanking. <laughs> <laughs> but like Banana Republic is, so you know where Banana Republic is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Upper Thames Street. Oh, okay. And then so Red this is Parrot definitely Midtown lower. Red Town is Lower Thames Street. Got it. Okay. So that's, you know, and people call it Thames, Thames, like nobody gets it right, right? <laughs> They'll be so like Thames funny. Street. Thames Street. <laughs> Take me to Thames Street. But, that's so uh, funny. But yeah, Yachting Village is, uh, it's nice because you can walk to a couple different parks. Yeah. But the parking over there, you, there's not a lot of houses with driveways. And if you have wow. a driveway, backing out of your driveway yeah. is an absolute nightmare because the streets, I don't know why they allow them to do this, but the streets are narrow to begin with. And wow. then you can park on one side. So you literally, as you're going down the yachting village, Taking your tires mirrors. can kind of rub against, <laughs> you know, if you have a car that can move the mirrors in, move them in because it's a wow. tight street. So it sounds like yachting village, maybe not a big yard, smaller Definitely lot size. Definitely small lots, yeah. And this is, but this is like, you want to be in the action. Yeah, this is, I'm in the action. Yeah. I don't want to move my car. I want to roll downtown. Yeah. That's going to be yachting village for you. Okay. That's really good to know. So lots of coffee, all the walks. Lots of coffee, a lot of walks, yeah. all the things. All the things. So fifth ward is number eight. Tell us about the fifth ward. So the fifth ward's been really interesting when watching it over the last two years. Primarily... There's a lot of locals that live there, mm -hmm. but the fifth ward prices have gotten much more expensive over the last few years because it's at the end of Lower Thames Street. So what people have been able to notice is like, hey, I'm kind of in the action, but out of the action yeah. and I can easily begin walking on Thames Street. So fifth ward used to be really all locals, but it has changed over the last couple of years. Wow. The homes there three to four years ago were like, I'd say four to six hundred thousand. Wow. The homes now, I would say, are between six hundred and a million five. Like wow. they've really Thank grown. Goodness. And as you go further down the fifth ward, there's some like on um, Wellington Ave, the further you go down, I mean, there's some price points over there that are six million, seven million, eight million. Wow. And those are a little more spread out. So the fifth ward really has two sections to it. You have kind of closer to Thames, and then as you go down Wellington Ave, there's really two sections almost to the fifth ward. Hmm. After you go past Roseneath, a lot of the homes become a lot more expensive. Wow. So I would say that the fifth ward used to be a lot of locals. Uh, there's still locals there now, but a lot of uh, people that have second homes Homes that that look to rent them out because it's a popular area to rent your home. Got it. Especially to the Salve students in the winter time. Got because it. Because Salve likes to be in this location, so that's something you're going to want to keep in mind if you're looking for a home that's like peace and quiet. Probably the Fifth <laughs> Ward is not going to be the best neighborhood for you if that's what you're looking for. If Got you're it. looking for a neighborhood that's in the action, kind of removed from the action, but you're yeah. okay with a little bit of noise, then you may consider the fifth ward. So it sounds like fifth ward, similar to Yachting Village, smaller lot sizes, yep. right? Yep. But still like, you know, walking distance. Yeah, what I like about the fifth ward is you can walk to like Kings Park and yeah. Kings Park in the summertime, they have live music 
pretty really much fun. yeah through the weekends you have a baseball field right there so if you have kids or pets they have yeah uh, they have actually it was flooded during the most uh, recent oh. rainstorm so and that's one thing too to point out of the fifth ward is you may need flood insurance over there that's a really good question uh, talking about flood insurance because yeah. it seems like the neighborhoods closest to the water yep. i know thames street when you look at the flood map it's yep. like a little funky, but... Yeah, a lot of Yachting Village, you won't need flood insurance. The Fifth Ward, certain areas need flood insurance, and the same Got thing it. with the point. Wow, that's yeah. really so good to know. So something to keep in mind, obviously, if you're paying cash, yeah. the flood insurance is not required, but it yeah. is a good idea in certain areas of Newport. So if someone wanted to buy an investment property and, you know, primarily use it for, let's say, academic rentals and the off-season, summer rentals, it sounds like Fifth Ward would, would probably be, be the, the best. best because. People come into town knowing that Salve Regina University is here and they think, oh, it's easy. I'll just have my it's easy rental, right? I'll have my cake and eat it too. I'll use yeah. it and then I'll rent it for nine months. And what people don't realize is Salve is not that big. So you have a pool of four or 500 oh, kids that are potentially renting, yeah. right? That are not staying in the dorms and they want to be next to their friends. So a yeah. lot of them will rent in the fifth ward. Got it. That's good to know. Yeah. It's really good to know. The last and final neighborhood, Ocean Drive. Ocean Drive. <laughs> wow. Ocean Drive is, is spectacular. So Ocean Drive is on the backside of Newport. One thing you may want to keep in mind if you're looking to purchase real estate in this area is it is going to take longer to get to your home coming mm. from the other side over the bridge of Newport and even down Route 24 because you have to go Bellevue and it gets backed up in the, in the summertime yeah. because of all the people here for the summer months. One thing that you'll notice about Ocean Drive is the price points over here are really high. I mean, you're talking two, three, four, five million dollar homes and up yeah. because of the privacy privacy and notoriety of owning out on Ocean Drive. Yeah. I mean, it is spectacular out there. You it's have really beautiful. beautiful ocean views. You have 10 miles of coastal line that goes around Ocean oh, wow. Drive. I didn't know it was 10 miles. You have Castle Hill out there. Yeah. You have uh, Cl uh, Ocean Cliff. That's where I got married. Oh. Yeah. You have Newport Country Club, which is a private beautiful. club out there. It is beautiful. And yeah. You have to be invited in. It's yep. pretty spectacular. It is pretty spectacular. <laughs> and you have Gooseberry Beach over there. And then yeah. the end of Cliff Walk is actually on that side of town as well. Wow. So these are going to be, again, primarily uh, primarily residents that live here all year round. Second, oh, home, second homes. Yeah. Majority more second homes. Yeah. And there's development going on over here as well. I mean, they're buying a three or four million dollar structure and then building a twenty million dollar structure. Yeah. So Ocean Drive has seen a lot of development over the of, over the years too as well. And wow. Also with Ocean Drive, you're going to drive everywhere. You know, it's not walkable. So that's yeah. what you have to be okay with. Is yeah. anything you want to do, it, you're going to have to drive to. So if you were to buy in Ocean Drive or near Ocean Drive neighborhood, how long would it take you to get from, let's say, your house roughly to downtown? So I would depending. say, depending, in the summer months, it might be 15, 20 minutes. Okay, and then once yeah. you get downtown, you're going to have trouble finding parking. Parking. So I recommend having your driver. Boat. <laughs> 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 driver, boat. Yeah. Uh, having your driver and then, or taking a ride sharing app like Uber or Lyft. Nice. You know, so that's what I would recommend because it is going to be busy going into town and yeah. busy coming out of town. You mentioned Uber. How is the Uber situation in Newport? That's a great question. So Uber and Lyft, I have found oh, personally, have been very reliable. That's um, good to know, yeah. I think during the pandemic, a lot of, you know, a lot of people were either scared to work or didn't want to work, right? Yeah. So I think they saw a little bit of a decrease in options, but I've never really had trouble getting an Uber or Lyft. That's good to know for someone who... They want to park their car and never, like, never you know, just it. rotate your tires every so often. Yeah. But I think that's good to know because, like, in Narragansett, you can't get an Uber, really. <laughs> There's yeah. no Ubers and ever. It's, it's interesting. So, and that's, I think, a critical component because you come to this area to really relax yeah. and enjoy yourself. The last thing you want to be doing is stressing about going downtown, having a night out, or trying to find a parking spot because you can literally drive around for... 20 minutes, 25 minutes <laughs> yeah. trying to find a parking spot. And yeah. then the parking spot you may find may be in a bad location and your car gets hit because these yeah. streets are tight. Or one hour, <laughs> one hour thing. <laughs> yeah, one hour parking yeah, signs are always <laughs> like, you can never understand the signs. Right? I know, I know. It's always panic mode. So they always panic, yeah. yeah. This has been really helpful. Like this is 
this is a great insight into these nine neighborhoods if someone's you know looking to yeah and of course if you're looking to get even more in depth on these neighborhoods you know reach out to me but yeah this will give you a good overview of the different neighborhoods here in newport rhode island yeah. so today's video we covered with caitlin all the different neighborhoods here in newport rhode island if you're looking for more information on newport or any area in rhode island all of my contact information is in the description below